The term climate change carries a lot of emotion. Guilt, anger, frustration, fear, but rarely any feelings of hope or accomplishment. And never any pride, and of course it doesn't. We're bombarded every day by images that seem to have only one conclusion. We're all just screwed. <laughs> We're screwed and there's not a lot we can do about it. Scientists are telling us that we're ruining the planet. You and I are ruining the planet every day by just living our lives. They're saying that we're to blame, but it's so hard to see anything that we can do to change that. I mean, I, I guess there are obvious things. We could live without electricity or heat and ride a bicycle everywhere. But if everyone did that, most things in our society would have to change anyway. And where do we even start? It feels pretty hopeless. But I've been working on solutions to climate change for 10 years, and I'm here to tell you that it's not hopeless. We have the power to stop climate change. You and I do right now. I'm not talking about changing light bulbs or buying more efficient refrigerators. I mean actually stopping climate change. We have the power. We've just lost sight of our power, and in order to find it again, we need a new paradigm. We need a new perspective that shows us exactly what we can do every day to fight climate change. Now, it's going to take some work to get there. We're going to have to dig through some science, but when we come out the other side, you'll know how to cut your carbon footprint by 60% today. Our new perspective has three parts. First, we need to know about green carbon. Then we need to know about fossil carbon, and finally, we need to know about green carbon versus fossil carbon in our modern world. So let's get started. First, green carbon. Green carbon is all about carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide gets a lot of press these days. We hear about it coming out of our tailpipes. We hear about it coming out of our smokestacks. We hear about it causing climate change. But the truth is more nuanced than that. The Earth's atmosphere has almost always contained carbon dioxide, and that's a good thing, because without carbon dioxide, our planet would be a lifeless, frozen hunk of rock like Mars. We need carbon dioxide to create the natural greenhouse effect, the greenhouse effect that keeps us from freezing, and that's really important. But even more than that, we need carbon dioxide because of something called the carbon cycle. Now, the carbon cycle is the beating heart of our planet. On geologic timescales, the carbon cycle is what sets the Earth's temperature like a thermostat. It balances the air and the rocks and the oceans and determines how hot it's going to get here. But on a day-to-day timescale, the carbon cycle is what allows complex forms like us to exist in the first place. We wouldn't be here without the carbon cycle, and it all depends on carbon dioxide. And that's the same carbon dioxide that you're breathing out right now because we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, and plants do the opposite. They breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen, and that's crucial because plants are actually building themselves molecule by molecule out of carbon dioxide in the air and the energy of the sun. Plants are literally made of air and sunlight. You can see this happening in your home every day. Every one of your house plants is making itself molecule by molecule out of the energy coming through your windows and the air in your home. If they were making themselves out of the soil in their pots, the soil would disappear as they grow. But that doesn't happen because plants are made of air and sunlight. They're the start of the carbon cycle. And then it goes like this. First, green plants capture carbon from the atmosphere and the energy of the sun. Then animals eat those plants to take that carbon and energy, because animals are made out of carbon and energy of the sun too. They just take it from plants. Then other animals eat those animals, on up the food chain, till eventually an animal does not get eaten, dies naturally, and then decomposition releases its carbon back into the atmosphere to start the cycle all over again. Decomposition is what balances the carbon cycle. It makes sure that the carbon that goes in comes back out again on the other side, and that it all forms a closed loop, just circulating the carbon from one side to the other. Now, there's a cycle like this that happens in the oceans. There's a cycle like this that happens in the soil. All of this carbon I call green carbon. Green carbon is the carbon that's supposed to be here. 
It's the carbon of living things. It's the carbon of the carbon cycle. It's the carbon of our climate. Green carbon does not cause climate change because it can't cause climate change. It already is our climate. It's already a part of our thermostat. Fossil carbon is what causes climate change. Now, now climate change is a huge issue. There are all sorts of contributing factors, but this is the big one. Fossil carbon is the main cause of climate change. If we can stop releasing fossil carbon, we can turn the tide of climate change. And in order to do that, we need to understand it. We need to know about its origin, and so we need to go back in time. And we can go back to any number of places in the Earth's history, but we're going to go back and visit the dinosaurs. And the first thing we notice when we get there is that there's a whole lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is the late Jurassic period, and there's seven times as much CO2 in the atmosphere as the Earth today. It was hot. But the carbon cycle operated just the way that ours does. First, green plants capture carbon from the atmosphere and the energy of the sun. Then animals eat those plants to take that carbon and energy. Then other animals eat those animals. <laughs> on up the food chain until eventually an animal does not get eaten, dies naturally, and then decomposition releases its carbon back into the atmosphere to start the cycle all over again. At least that's how it was supposed to happen. There was a problem. Decomposition stopped working very well. Decomposition needs oxygen in order to function correctly. It's the great recycler. It's what makes sure that what goes in comes back out of the carbon cycle again. But under the right circumstances, in swamps and in shallow seas, zones without oxygen can develop. We see this on our planet today in our swamps and in the algae blooms like the one off the coast of California right now. Algae, green stuff, grows so fast that it sucks up all the oxygen out of the water beneath it. If something dies in that water, decomposition doesn't have the power to break it apart completely. Instead, it sinks to the bottom, partially decomposed, and still full of a lot of its carbon and energy. Well, in the late Jurassic period, the Earth was covered in swamps and shallow seas, and so carbon drained out of the carbon cycle. It formed huge reservoirs of undecomposed organic material full of carbon and energy. The carbon cycle was off balance. Eventually, circumstances would change, and the carbon cycle would right itself again, but there was less carbon to go around, and so the carbon cycle had to evolve to a world of less carbon, and that takes about 100,000 years. And in the meantime, all of the carbon in those reservoirs slowly sank into the Earth, where heat and pressure transformed it into coal, oil, and natural gas. This is our fossil carbon. Fossil carbon is the carbon of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels only burn because the energy stored in carbon molecules by million-year-old plants. Basically, fossil fuel is million-year-old sunlight. Now, the heat and pressure underground concentrated that sunlight, so it's really potent and it burns really well. That's why we like it so much. But when we release that energy and burn that fuel, we also release the fossil carbon that contains it. And that's the problem. Because if we come back to our Earth today, we'll see that our carbon cycle is balanced the way that it is. The amount of carbon that goes into the carbon cycle comes back out again. It's all a closed loop. So when we burn fossil fuels and release all of their fossil carbon, it goes up into the atmosphere and has nowhere to go. It can't just join into the ca carbon cycle again because the carbon cycle is a closed loop. It can only take in so much carbon. And so instead, it stays in our atmosphere, where it unnaturally increases the greenhouse effect acidifies our oceans, and causes climate change. This is the cause of, the, of climate change. Now, eventually, 100,000 years from now or so, our carbon cycle will also adapt to all of this new carbon. But in the meantime, we're screwed. We are burning million-year-old sunlight by the barrel everywhere on Earth. We just love this stuff. The truth is, we're going to run out. Even if climate change were a hoax, if our society is going to survive, we have to switch away from fossil carbon and fossil fuels because we're going to run out. Climate change is just forcing our hand. And so what are our options? What can we choose instead of million-year-old sunlight? Well, there's the heat in the center of our planet, but it's difficult to access and occasionally unstable. There's our newfound ability to release atomic energy, but the byproducts are deadly and last for hundreds of thousands of years themselves. There's the moon's gravitational pull, creating ocean tides. 
There's a little energy in the spinning of the earth and in gravity, and there's sunlight. That's it. Those are our six options, period. If our society is going to survive, we have to switch to these options. We don't have a choice. And of them all, sunlight offers by far the most energy. We can use it directly as solar radiation. We can use it indirectly as wind or waves. Or we can use the energy stored in carbon molecules by green plants. Because green plants are the original solar panels. They're what trapped the energy in fossil fuels to begin with millions of years ago. And the only reason we moved away from green plants is because the energy in fossil fuels is concentrated underground. But we don't need them anymore. Today, just about anything that we make out of fossil carbon, we can make out of green carbon instead. And when we do that, it can't cause climate change because it's already a part of the climate. It's already a part of our thermostat. This is a plastic bag that's made out of petroleum, out of oil. Millions of years ago, this was partially decomposed organic gunk at the bottom of the sea. This is a plastic bag that's made out of plants that were alive just a little while ago. They're both plastic. The difference is the source, and it's all about the source, because this one causes climate change, and this one doesn't. And you have the power to choose. You don't have to choose fossil fuels and fossil carbon. And when you don't, you can cut your carbon footprint incredibly. In three steps, you can cut your carbon footprint by 60% just by not choosing this, because we don't need it anymore. Step one is the easiest. It's your electricity. Right now, you can sign up with an alternative energy provider that will generate all of your electricity without releasing fossil carbon. Wherever you live, whatever your circumstances, if you get an electric bill, you can sign up with Alternative Energy today. It might be solar, it might be wind, it might be something else, but just this one step will cut your carbon footprint by 15%. By comparison, changing all of the light bulbs in your home to LED bulbs will only cut your carbon footprint by two-tenths of 1%. It's a big difference. Now, it can be hard to know what your options are, and if you need help, you can come to my website, jacksoncarpenter.com slash electricity, type in your zip code, and find out what your options are. Step two, heating and cooling your home. But we already have a head start on this because most cooling devices, most AC units, most heat pumps, most swamp coolers already run on electricity, and we've taken care of our electricity. And all that's left is heating our home in the winter. And likewise, if you have an electric heat pump, electric, electric baseboard heating, or electric space heaters, you've taken care of that as well. And so you've cut your carbon footprint by 32% already. That's almost a third. But here's where it gets interesting. What if you don't have electric heat? Well, anything that you can use to, to heat your home that releases green carbon instead of fossil carbon will not cause climate change. So if your furnace runs on heating oil, you can go down to your local biodiesel distributor, there's one less than 10 miles from where I'm standing, and get a green carbon product called BioHeat. BioHeat's made of green carbon, it doesn't cause climate change, even if you burn it in your furnace. Or you can burn wood. Wood is made of green carbon, it doesn't cause climate change either if it's sourced sustainably. Now, wood or biomass is maybe the most contentious issue in climate change today. It is sustainable if you plant the seeds, let it grow, and then cut down the trees. We can't go into our forest and cut down our forest because that's disastrous for our climate. We need to replant our forests. But wood that's harvested sustainably as a crop is a great source of climate-friendly climate fuel. It won't cause climate change, even if you see smoke coming out of your chimney, because it's not about the smoke, it's about the source of the carbon. Step three is your car. Now, here's something that might be news to you. Every car on the road today has an alternative source of fuel. Every one, even your old gas guzzler. Just switching over will cut your carbon footprint by another 28%. So what options do you have? Well, if, like most people, you fill your car with gasoline, your green carbon fuel is alcohol. Your car will run on alcohol. The most common kind of alcohol fuel in the U.S. is the same kind we like to drink, especially on spring break. It's ethyl alcohol or ethanol. 
Uh, you can ferment ethanol from just about anything. Sugar cane or sugar beets are great sources of ethanol. But whatever you make it from, ethanol is made out of green carbon. It won't cause climate change even if it burns in your engine. Now, before you run out and fill up your gas tank with vodka, <laughs> you do need to get real ethanol. And before you do that, you actually need to get an adapter to make your car into what we're calling a flex fuel vehicle. But most adapters cost less than $300 and take less than an hour to install. Most gasoline, uh, ethanol is so compatible with gasoline, in fact, that most gasoline sold in the U.S. already has about 10% ethanol in it anyway. So that takes care of gasoline. What if you have a diesel vehicle? Well, the green carbon alternative to diesel fuel is called biodiesel. You can put it in your tank and drive away. You don't even need a conversion. And these are only the two most available kinds of alternative fuels. There's a whole second generation of alternative fuels called drop-in fuels that should be available any day. And you have options. You, can, you have the power to choose a, another source other than fossil carbon. You can even choose a shiny new electric car as long as the, your electricity comes from a source that does not release fossil carbon. That's the clincher. If your electricity comes from coal, your car's carbon footprint will be as bad as your grandma's gas guzzler because it's all about the source. And that's it. Step one, electricity. Step two, heat. Step three, your car. Altogether, we've cut 60% of your carbon footprint, and you didn't even have to buy a bicycle. <laughs> no governmental plan comes anywhere close to that kind of a reduction, and that's the point. We can do this on our own. We don't have to wait for the government to act. And you don't need me standing up here telling you what to do either. Together, we've gotten to 60% of your carbon footprint. How can you go further? Well, just look to the source of things. Do your products come from green carbon or fossil carbon? Do you want paper or plastic? Or do you want a reusable cotton bag? Or do you want a plastic bag that's made out of plants instead of petroleum? You have so many options, and you have the power to choose. And you have the power to tell your friends. Tell your friends. They don't have to feel hopeless in the face of climate change either. Our future is one of hope and pride in the way that we've lived our lives. Everyone in this room has the power to choose that future today. You can just choose something other than fossil carbon. Your choice has never been more important. The world literally depends on it. Thank you. <laughs>